I'd like to pray. <coughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you come aboard here today and, and listen to our hearts. You know that mine still hurts from the, the pain that I have. And I still want you to know, Lord, that I've always been so thankful that you've been, been there for me and my family, Lord. I am so blessed and so grateful that you've heard my voice and you've listened. And you've helped me through all these times. I'm so grateful for all things you've done for us. I just ask and pray that anybody here today who has a heart that is broken or is in pain, Lord, can you help them through this? Please, please, Lord, have them, have their heart be given to you, Lord, and ask for your, for your guidance, Lord, because only you know where they are going and where they've been. And that they need help, Lord. We just ask him for in your precious name. Amen and amen. I'm so sorry about blubbering and upset, but this is a hard and heartfelt pain that I've had to deal with. Um, one, I have to tell you that um, I, I had a family of six children. And uh, my first husband, and I had a daughter. Her name was Tylee Ann Meyer. But um, I also, one of my six children was Paul, my oldest. He had a friend. His friend's name was David. Sweet boy. He was in his teens. About 15, 16, 17 years old, around that age group. And he used to come over to my house with my children and visit. And I used to tease him because he would get the dookie braids in his hair. <laughs> and I would say, oh, cute. <laughs> you know, and they had the earrings up the ears, you know. I said, oh, real cute. Can I borrow some of your earrings one of these days? Because you have such cute earrings. And I didn't know that his heart was broken. His heart was broken badly. Because his parents were, were, were split and divorced and remarried to two other people. And this poor boy was being passed backwards and forth and he was going through a time. And because of that, he felt that he didn't need to be here anymore. And that was so sad because he was such a sweet boy. His, he was so sweet and I just didn't understand it. But I felt so bad. I, I felt bad for my son. I thought, oh my gosh, you know. I called both of my sons yesterday and I talked to him. Anthony, who was my youngest, you might have remembered in my man. And my oldest son, uh, who is Paul. And I asked Anthony, I said, how do you feel about all of this? I said, you know, I've never really asked you how you felt about your sister dying. And he said, he said, you know, Mom, I just felt like he lost so much. He wasn't here to see, see his family grow, you know. Um, you know, he didn't get to see his life and what his life would be today, you know. I think that it was very selfish of him to take his life. And I thought, huh, I, I didn't think that way myself. But this is how he felt. My older son, I talked to him and I said, how, how do you feel about <coughs> your friend that, you know, passed on too? And he said, Mom, I, I feel so bad because he didn't get a chance to see, see what life had to show and give him, you know to see his brothers and sisters grow up and, and, and get to know 
what his life was going to be like someday. That, that just broke my heart talking to them. But then, but he took his life. He went to a tall building and, and jumped off and hung himself. I just couldn't even fathom the thought of that. That just, just broke my heart terribly. Then with my daughter, Kai, she was 15 when she passed. She came to me and she says, Mom, we were sitting in the car, riding in the car one day, and she says, Mom, what would, what would it be like if, if you took your life? And I said, Honey, don't ever speak like that. Because you, you know, Amen. you are to be here with us, you know. She was brought up in church. She knows that God loves us and that he wouldn't want us to take our lives. Amen. I, I was so broken hearted that he, she even thought of something like that. I said, please don't, don't ever think of something like that. You know, you're never going to be here ever again, you know. God is only going to know the day that you go. Well, she was having some real strong issues and trouble, so she wound up in a place where they were supposed to help her. And while she was there, she met another little girl. Well, that little girl became friends with her. That little girl took her life. She hung herself in, in the place that she was at. And my daughter tried to do the same thing, but she didn't have it happen. They made her sit down and write a letter stating why this was wrong. Well, that wasn't going to work for her because in a few weeks she took her life and she hung herself too. This just tore me apart because she used to always tell me, Mom, I'm going to live next door to you. I'm going to live with you. I'm going to live down the street, but I'm going to live real close to you. Mom, little did she know she was just going to live in my heart for the rest of her life. Because I just can't think of her being gone. She was a beautiful little girl. Everybody loved her. She loved God. And she knew God. And someday, I guess, I'll get a chance to see her someday. Amen. And my, my first husband, of course, this hit him hard. He had had struggles all his life, mentally. Well, he decided he was going to take his life, too. A couple of years later, he shot himself. He didn't completely end it. It just tore up his organs inside, and he was in and out. He was in a hospital for six months of his life. Then after that, he was in and out of the hospital for a year because of it, and he eventually passed on. This was a, a heartache, too. This was very <coughs> too. I have to let you all know and understand that God loves us. Yeah. This is this for any of us. And I, like I said, this is a hard thing for me to deal with. I didn't realize how bad it was because you know you have a tendency to want to suppress. But God has always been there for me and my family, and He's always been there to take care of us. Mm -hmm. yeah. The Lord yeah. is so good. Amen. Yeah. One of the things that I had want to read to you is in Isaiah 49 13 for the Lord has comforted his people and will have mercy on his people. and God gave me this verse to give to you all to know that he is here for us he is here always for us I'm very thankful that I have a husband now who is very good to me and very loving and puts up and tolerates me <laughs> through everything. So I want to let you know that there is a good life out there. So please, if you are even, even thinking of these 
these thoughts. Please go to somebody, ask somebody to help you, Amen. but definitely right. ask Father God to help you through it. Right. If Amen. you ever need to talk to somebody, I'm always here for you. Over. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. I came to Brother Mike a couple of weeks ago, a couple months, and said, Brother Mike, I have an idea. And he said, okay, as long as we preach Jesus. And I said, yes, sir. Um, I see it in work every day. The ladies I work with who have a lot of times in their own struggles and their own battles, brought it on themselves, but we had a lady who had numerous suicide attempts, and she did, she's, she's 19, 20, and it just broke my heart, because she has so much to live for, and um, now she's pregnant, about halfway through her pregnancy, and I think this baby's given her a reason to live. But I looked at her and I said, that baby's not the only reason that you have a reason to live. You have a reason to live because you have a plan and a purpose in this world. And someone needs to hear about your struggle. So when I started asking Brother Mike to plan on suicide prevention, because I know it's special with his heart. Um, I said, Cheryl dealt with this. She spoke to the youth. Can I ask her to speak as well? And Cheryl, I appreciate you so very much because I know that was very hard. Um, so I started to delve into scripture and a whole bunch of other, just whatever I could find. And um, when I went to Brother Mike, I said, can we do it on September 10th? September 10th is World Suicide Prevention Awareness Week day. And uh, September 10th through September 16th is national, the U.S. National Suicide Prevention Week, and I said, we need to do it that day. That day is the day we do it. And that's why I gave you all a yellow ribbon. And some of us are wearing blue, or teal, and purple because I didn't have enough blue and purple ribbon. I'm sorry. But yellow is the world suicide prevention color, and that's the reason I gave you all one. Um, I want to start off by reading Isaiah 43, 1 through 3. Um, if you all watch The Chosen at all, if you've ever seen The Chosen, it's a free TV show, and it portrays Jesus and his disciples. And the first episode has to do with Mary Magdalene. And, of course, if you know, Jesus cast out seven um, demons for Mary Magdalene. And she repeats this verse over and over, because her father, her biological father, taught it to her. And it struck home with me, because... She was getting ready to kill herself because of the demons, because she had no relief from the struggle she was dealing with. And um, she remembers this verse, and Jesus calls her out and says, Mary. She had not remembered her name in a long, long time, and he called her Mary. So Isaiah 43, 1 through 3a says, But now, O Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you, O Israel, the one who formed you, says, do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you go through the deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through the rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Your Savior. It's important for anyone who struggles with suicide to remember that Jesus is always there. And he went through everything that we could possibly go through. He felt everything we could. And it's important to re remember that suicide can affect anyone. Depression can affect anyone. Um, and Satan uses it as a tool to tell us that no one cares. No one will be affected if we die. That they'll be better off. But that's a lie. 
because suicide will affect everyone around us. And it's like I told the kids that night when Cheryl came over speaking, I said, if you want to know someone that cares, it's me. I'm one. So if you know someone who has thoughts of suicide, who's had thoughts of depression or taking their own life, tell them, I'm one. I'm one that matters. Because I'm one person who will care if you die or if you live. Amen. Amen. Um, every 40 seconds in the world, someone takes their life. Maybe not every 40 seconds, but it averages out to that. Um, there's 132 people in the world per day that commit suicide. In Kentucky, we are have a rate of 17.9% of suicide. And that is not astronomical, but it's a huge percentage. That's 17.9% of deaths every year are suicide. Um, and uh, it's uh, the second leading death causes from ages 10 to 34. These children and these teenagers and these young adults have no idea that they're ending their life, that they're not going to come back. Um, I don't know why they deal with a lot. And I don't know why that it's not higher for other ages, but I guess because they deal with so much and so much trouble. Um, I want you all to know and hear that, you know, we all know that God loves us, but God loves individual suicidal thoughts just as much as he loves everybody. Amen. Amen. Charles Spurgeon once said, I have a great need for Christ, and I have a great Christ for my need. And it's important to understand that <clears throat> that, so is that individual who is suicidal might just need Christ just as much as everybody else. And sometimes they need to know the need more than we as individuals who don't struggle with those thoughts. There was another quote that I found, and it stuck with me. It says, one dark moment in a Christian's life cannot undo what Christ did for us on the cross. And it's important to remember that nothing can separate us from Christ. Amen. Amen. Nothing on this earth. And... While someone who loves Christ may commit suicide, that can't separate them from God. Only the denial of Jesus as Lord and Savior Amen. can separate them from God. Today, if you don't know Jesus, if you have uh, a need for him in your heart, Brother Michael will speak on this in just a little bit, because I know he will. I asked him to. Um, and he always does. He always preaches the gospel every time. Um, there's a little great opportunity. And I'm going to play a song later. I asked Stephen and I asked Julie, I said, can we play this song? It's been on my heart all week. And uh, it's been on Kayla recently, and it's called Come Jesus Come. But we're going to play that for invitation here shortly. Um, and it just, I'm, I'm sorry if I get a little bad at possible with it, but I, I just, I've been singing in my car and as much as I can to, you know, drive, not dance and get all kind of crazy in it, but um, Brother Mike. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Cheryl, for sharing from your heart. Amen. Very hard. Yeah. I had two deacons that were their friends. One was in a church in another county. About a year ago, he found out he was sick, found out he was dying, and he tied a rope up in his outbuilding. His feet never left the ground. He just put it around his neck and ran as hard as he could forward to break his own neck. And another deacon that I was, his pastor, he found that he had cancer, and he would tell me often, he would say, getting old is not any fun. He said, this is hard. Well, that was about 15 years ago. I can identify a little bit more than I could then. Well, he found out he had cancer. He walked out in his front yard with a small caliber handgun and killed himself. It's the same man that told me to hang in there. 
Satan wants me not to ever quit. Satan wants you to quit and give up on life. Right, right. And here's what I realized, not only from those two, but from a teenager that on his 16th birthday that I used to be his pastor that belonged to the group called the Bloods in Paducah. And after he had gotten saved, gave his heart to the Lord, they, they never would leave him alone. The gangs wouldn't leave him alone. And on his 16th birthday, y'all heard me share that. <coughs> He walked into the living room with his father's 16-gauge shotgun and he put it in his mouth and he took it out and said, hey, y'all, watch this. He pulled the trigger. I did that funeral and a year later I did his father's funeral in the same house trailer. He took a 357 Magnum, placed it in his mouth and killed himself. Then I dealt with a man that was a deputy sheriff that had some problems in his life that put a pistol in his mouth and pulled the trigger and I was asked to go view the body and the bullet never left his head and it looked like a basketball. You couldn't even determine that he was even a, a human being. And I thought, oh God. Uh, he destroyed the very thing that you made in your image. <coughs> Let me encourage you today. The Bible says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You have no right to destroy what God did for you. Amen. You have no right to do that. Let me make this clear. God will never, ever lead you to kill yourself. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Ever. He said, I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. But the thief comes not to hurt to steal, kill, and to destroy. Yeah, right. If you've been in a position to teach or to lead or to be a parent or to be a friend to someone and they took their life, I can assure you the accuser of the brethren in Revelation 13, excuse me, verse 12, verse 11 said, The accuser of the brethren accuses them before God day and night. He not only accuses God, but he accuses you. Where were you? What did you call? What did you check on, Brother Mike? Yeah. You see, we don't recognize our own failures enough. Satan brings them up to us. Yeah. But let me assure you this. If you're a believer in Christ, let me help you. Don't you ever, ever encourage somebody to take their life. Yeah. Right. And you stay tuned in when they make those little comments about that. He said, well, he's not serious. Watch it. Mm -hmm. The Bible says out of the mouth it's speaking the abundance of the heart. Yep. They're right. dealing with it. They're thinking about it. Nothing the rest of your body reacts except when your brain sent by Satan. He puts that idea in your head and then it would come out of your mouth. Take that as a warning when you hear somebody say that. Go tell somebody, tell your pastor, tell your teacher, tell somebody that somebody you love is talking this way. Amen. And if they get mad at you, so what? Yeah. Right. It's better than them committing suicide. Amen. Amen. Don't worry about them getting mad at you. I got people mad at me all the time. <laughs> Amen. Don't you? But we need to clear some things up in the Word today. And I'm going to do the best that I can to do this with all respect with God. In the book of John, chapter 5, and I'm not going to be very long. In the book of John, chapter 5, and verse 24. Jesus nailed something down that you need to know about today. I was speaking with a man years ago and I said, I'm still, I've still got a lot more scriptures than I need to learn about a believer in Christ, whether they can lose their salvation or not, no matter, listen to me, no matter how they leave this world. Okay? John 5, 24. <coughs> Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say to you, he that hears my word 
and believes on him that sent me has everlasting life and might Shall. What's that? Shall. Shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Let me put it to you another way. Maybe it just might help you when it comes to the result of sin. Suicide is the last sin that you will ever commit. But I'm told that he paid for all my sins. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Paul, don't you take that as an excuse to hurt yourself. Amen. Yeah. I wonder if there's ever been a believer that sinned just moments before they left this world. Has there ever been a believer you think that got caught up in traffic? <laughs> oh, I'm serious. They got angry at someone. And then they lost their life. Has there ever been a believer that uttered a cuss word? <laughs> and then they lost their life. Amen? Amen? Has there ever been a believer in Jesus Christ? And the Bible says, Thou shalt not kill, but yet he's in battle and he takes another soldier's life. That's his enemy. And then he loses his. You think that's ever happened, y'all? You think there's ever been a believer that had a moment of lust that went through their mind or they looked at something and lusted after it and through an accident or through a sickness or through a heart attack or through a stroke, they lost their life immediately. I'm telling you here today that my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, when he hung on the cross, the Bible said that he paid for all our sins. Amen. That's right. You reckon somebody's ever refused to forgive someone else? Lost their life. Amen? I don't want you to take this the wrong way. I pray you don't today. You reckon there's anybody that's ever disobeyed the Holy Spirit and they lost their life? Has anybody ever did the wrong thing? Anybody ever said something hateful to someone else? It's a sin. You ever refuse to forgive someone else and you lose your life? What I'm trying to tell you is that when he said somebody that hears the word and they believe on me, they have everlasting life and they shall not come into condemnation. Amen. Right. Maybe somebody's guilty of greed and they lost their life. They took something that wasn't theirs. Maybe you stole something and you lost your life. And you need to understand. Ecclesiastes 3.14 says this. I know that whatsoever God does, it'll be forever. Nothing can be put to it or anything taken from it. God does this that men should fear before him. Listen, the only thing that will send you to hell itself is by you being an unbeliever. That's right. That's right. That's right. When you blaspheme the Holy Ghost. In other words, when you... Tell me a story. When you tell me something, I'll say, Jimmy, that ain't true. I don't believe you. That's blaspheming the Holy Spirit when you say, God, I don't believe. I don't believe in what you did for me. And I'm not going to accept it. That makes you an unbeliever. But oh, thank God. And he says, so, so ever. I'll call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. That word believer is so key. Right. The Bible says unbelievers will have their part in the lake of fire along with the murderers, the whoremongers, and all those other listed in Revelation chapter 21, verse 8. Just by being an unbeliever. And so I would ask you simply today, have you ever believed on Christ and accepted him into your life? Because if you haven't, you are still an unbeliever. Right. Yeah, Brother Mocha didn't do anything. Yeah, you did. You were born into this world. That makes you born into sin. Man, right. For all of sin comes short of the glory of God. Right. Mm -hmm. Under the word believe and believer is so important in the message is so important in Scripture. I'm going to come down here and share it with you. Because it's very important to you today. My 
remind you again. Don't you get confused by this message. This pastor will never endorse you hurting yourself. Amen. God will never endorse you hurting yourself. He never will. Amen. Remember, he said, I have come that you might have a life. Amen. He didn't come that you might take your life. The Bible says it's a point of a man to die, but after this, the judgment. God has a time set for you. Right. Don't mess with his calendar. Yeah. Amen. 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 And what's that like, y'all? What's that like when you get to that point? I, I can tell you what it's like when I felt it one time and I thought I was going to lose everything and pride got me. I thought I was going to lose my home and lose my standing in a community, Brother Timmy. Amen. Right. The embarrassment of that church that a letter getting ready to be sent to the courthouse that you're going to lose everything and you're just trying hard. And that idea goes through your mind from old Satan and the whole boy. Just take that old 78 grand cream that your cousin were always teaching say, it's going to hurt that wreck. <laughs> Nobody's on the car, man. It's the best I can do. <laughs> Well, the same whistle was going down the said road and hit that bridge head on as hard as you could hit it. And Tanya and Alice, that will have it made. How foolish. Right. That I would even entertain it all night long. How foolish. And I was a servant in the house of God. So if you say, well, I'm above those thoughts, but watch yourself. Get your head right. right. Satan can attack you too. Amen. Yeah, thank God I woke up the next morning. Yeah. And I grabbed a hand of my daughter and my wife and said, God, if we got to live in a pup tent, I don't care. I have my salvation. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. And I walked into the bank and the man that led me to the Lord I've never seen for ever again. And she was sitting behind the desk at the bank. Yeah. <laughs> Him. He said, why are you here? I said, look at this paper, man. He said, God sent me here to keep young families from losing their home. <laughs> Amen. 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 Something really happened when you say, okay, God, I'm not going to hurt myself. I'm going to do what you want me to do. Live. Yep. Amen. That's right. You gave me life. You want me to live. Not take my own life. Because you're worried about being embarrassed or you're hurt or you're disturbed. And by the way, I'm going to help you with something today. I hope you understand this. I've lost my hanky panky somewhere. <laughs> I guess I'm going to call it a handkerchief instead of a hanky panky. I'm convinced that you're not in your right mind when you hurt this very place. That, that same day earlier, I know of two different instances that they. Put the band-aids on their arm, they cut their cell, hurt their cell. And they banded it up to take care of their cell, and later on they take your life. You're not in the right mind when you take your life. No. Nope. That's, right. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I don't know about you, but it's a secret. But I love me. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> don't you love yourself just a little Amen. bit? <laughs> Amen. Amen. You're who you look at first thing you get up, and your hair looks like you slept on a park bench. You know, park bench. <laughs> You're who you go look at first. So what I look at today, we care about ourselves. So if Satan tells you not to, remember it's a lie. Mm -hmm. That's right. Don't you ever forget that. Don't you forget that. All wrapped up in a ball of wax. You need to remember that God loves you. He has a plan for you. Yeah. And it's not for you to hurt yourself. Yeah. That's right. So if your mind has ever been wrong, <coughs> I don't know what you're going to do with yourself. But you see, when you get to a place like I was where I had some distrust in God, I took it upon myself that I'm going to fix that. You better watch it when you start thinking like that. Yep. God's the one who can fix time. Amen. I'm still in that same house about 40 years later. Yep. Amen. 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 Amen.
you need to know today. Man, he took a while to get to that. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and here's that word, believe. Again. The Bible says unbelievers have a part in the lake of fire. Believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. 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 So that word believe. For with the heart man believes <laughs> unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Scripture says, He so believes on him shall not be ashamed. Mine came down to whether I believed in, in God or not. If you doubt God, then you're liable to take some things into your own hands and do them. I trust Him now. Amen. Amen. But yes. it took that time, it took that wake up call, that slap in the face to realize who He was and how much He loved me. And you'll be surprised what that little bitty, that little bitty seed of faith that God can take and move mountains with it. Amen. Change lives with it. Yep. You may have somebody today that they're talking about it. Maybe it's you. You've run that over in your own mind. You've thought about destroying yourself because you listen to Satan more than you have the Word of God and the Holy Spirit living in you. This message is for you today. You need to tell that liar, murder, and thief to leave you alone. Uh -huh. and give your heart and soul to Jesus Christ. And you trust God for the rest of your day. Or you may also go have somebody you love and you care about. But you know right now they're talking about hurting themselves. You know they're such a low spot in their life. I don't know about that. Is there anybody here though when somebody prayed for them, you recognize that prayer works. And it changes your life. Amen. 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 Right. Amen. Thank you for that. One believes that way. I do. Amen. 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 Prayer changes things. Right. You know anybody that's really low down right now that hurt him? I do. Amen. 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 Do you expect things to be changed just on their own because <laughs> you want them to be? Maybe you need to come pray for them in a minute. I was like some of your mothers to lay their hands on Willow and help me to get the devil away from her. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am. The mothers that have kids that know they have they do have worries about it. And yes. it starts so much younger. They start at nine. My yes. daughter has told her counselor what she wanted and how she would do it. And she's embarrassed. She's embarrassed right now, but like you said, if you love someone, I've stepped up, called a bunch of people over this last week, and a lot of people told me power of prayer, or the power of prayer. And then sometimes just asking for someone to, as she's got my blood, and I put my hand on her and I pray with her, with other mothers, that we could swarm that devil away from her. Yes, ma'am. Amen. 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 And we reminded Willow the other night that she got the prettiest, widest smile. Mm -hmm. And it changes. Look at your dream back there. <laughs> <laughs> it changes things. Right. Give our children hope. Amen. That's right. Amen. If you don't know Christ, quit, quit playing with God. Quit messing around. If you don't know Christ, come. Just save your soul and make things right between you and them. He is the one that gives life. God is the one that will end your life someday when it's your time. Good. That he's already established. He already knows when your last day is, but you don't. But you have no right to mess with it. You come if you need to accept Christ. You come if you need to pray for somebody. You come if you want to be honest with yourself. But yeah, you've been having some of these thoughts. You need to get them right before God. But God, I know I've been chewing on this. I've been trying to figure a way to fix it myself, but I need to realize you created the heavens and earth. If you can handle that, I believe you can take care of what I'm dealing with. Sure. You come if you have a need today. You've heard the gospel presented. You've heard folks share from their heart. You've heard from a mother that loves her daughter. Amen. Amen. You've heard from a mother that lost a daughter. And you've heard from a shepherd. Loves our kids. 
man with everything that's in her. You know, do what the Holy Spirit of God tells you to do today. And don't you dare worry about that clock on the wall back there. Satan's wristwatch. Right, right, right. You worry about what God's speaking to you to do today. Maybe you want to come encourage some of these folks to share this morning. Do what God tells you to do today. Sometimes I fall. Sometimes I fall to my knees and pray. Come, Jesus, come. Let today be the day. Sometimes I feel like I'm going to break, but I'm holding on to a hope that won't fade. Come, Jesus, come. of grace. 